West. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Well, folks, as you know, we're right in the midst of the campaign. I still have my, my ballot here with me, and I haven't even opened it yet. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting all kinds of things going to happen next week. <laughs> And so I'm, just gonna, I'm just waiting, you know what I mean? You never know what may happen, see? So I will open up, uh, actually, I will actually open up this envelope uh, probably next Sunday. I mean, that okay. would probably be the last day that one would, and I'm going to have it there with me because I, I think all, all, all things are going to happen next week. I realize there's a storm back in the back in the east, on mm -hmm. the east coast, and that's going to be a toughie. Yeah. And so I, as a result of that, I think there's going to be more pressure on the campaign. Uh, to try to, you know, because they won't be able to be doing any door knocking in, in that particular area. And and uh, I really feel sorry about the fact that that's happening up back east and, and uh, hope that the, the folks over there are going to be safe and well, there won't be as many deaths. And, um, anyway, it's going to be a tough situation. Yeah. So good luck. Okay. Anyway, it is. I'm putting it back in my pocket. And so I'll go back at the deal. Well, okay. Well, hey, look, we got quite a show today. And uh, what we did today, we thought maybe we might maybe invite the uh, the Republican Party, the state of Oregon, and maybe the, the Democratic Party, the state of Oregon, to come and just kind of share with uh, with our viewing audience. Because again, you're probably still trying to figure out who you're going to vote for. I understand it's about 30 percent of the, the country is still is kind of like sitting out there. Is it 30 percent of that piece? Mm -hmm. Or maybe maybe a little bit less, of something yeah. else. Maybe mm -hmm. something else. It was another number. There's mm -hmm. also kind of stuff to watch t on TV that you don't know what's going on. Right. So bombarded with stuff, you're yeah. stressed out. But anyway, but the bottom line is that I've invited both uh, uh, Jeff Jeffrey Owens from the Republican Party indicated to me that hey, he might be busy, so so he won't be here. So what we're going to do today is that we're going to give the Democratic Party of Oregon the opportunity to articulate uh, some of the issues here within the area as to what are their concerns uh, with reference to the race and and why it's so, so important from a national perspective to vote for the right person. I'm sure they're talking about President Obama because there are many, uh, many uh, entities, uh, well, it was entitlement on, right. on the table that, um, that we are basically taking advantage of in the state of Oregon. And so we thought maybe it would be a good idea to, to have, uh, to talk about this and, and joining us in this conversation after you got, you've seen Bob. Bob's been around here for quite some time, so he's co-hosting this thing with me. Yeah. And so, uh, so representing the, the party today, in many ways, uh, we've got uh, Frank Dixon, known Frank for quite some time. He's the vice chair. And I told him to send, maybe send me that best person of the, the party to represent <laughs> the chair for some strange I did, I just, I saw his resume, but I saw Frank, and so I just had to make sure that I, Frank had to be a part of this, right. this conversation, right? Thank okay, you. fine. Thank and then naturally, uh, our dear own person who's very much involved in many of the issues here in, in the Tri-County area, and I'm talking about the commissioner of Multnomah County Commissioner in District 2, Loretta Smith. Uh, she's you. not just the fact that she was elected just a commissioner, but she's been a, a long uh, employee, a long time standing person for many years with uh, our senator, uh, Ron Wyden. Yes. And yes. in fact, that's where I met her. Over that's there right. with Ron Wyden. She used to schedule Ron coming on the show. They were in the Digest. <laughs> and it was really great. But anyway, we got a lot of respect for Loretta because she's been very much involved right at the front of the line with reference to the issues. Right. In this in this tri county area, uh, both as a as a commissioner, as a as a, a congressperson, Whiten, mm -hmm. and also as Senator Whiten, she was kind of like that lead person to basically let him know. And so as a result of that, you know, we we benefited a great a great deal from Washington as a result of that. So we want to thank you for that first. Thank, thank you for having me here. And you know that I'm a nonpartisan county commissioner. What was that? I'm a nonpartisan county commissioner. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody well, knows I'm a Democrat. Yeah, right. Well, you work hard. You know, the bottom line is that you're, you're a very people for everybody. Yeah, I know that. you're a very people-oriented person. And I can say I thought it would be great to, oh, yeah. to have you here with Frank. Oh yeah. And Frank said, well, that, that was okay. The party oh, yeah. said it was okay. That's so that's why nice. we're gonna have this discussion. <laughs> Absolutely. So in all due respect, why don't we just kind of uh, maybe? What, 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 in fact, why don't we do this? Why, when we open it up with you, we we'll talk yeah. about the issues, or whatever, and then Frank will kind of dovetail and just kind of talk about what are some of the other issues and concerns that the. Democratic Party has statewide. Well, you know, I'll, I'll do a, a lead in on this. Um, it's it's very clear. Everyone, I think, just from a, a national perspective, they need to make it very personal. Mm -hmm. You talked about entitlements. I have a son who's in college right now. President Obama has put more money into entitlements like Pell Grants than any other president. What's a Pell Grant? Pell Grant mm -hmm. is a grant that will allow students to go to school, which will grant them free money of sorts. Mm -hmm. And so he's doubled the amount of, of Pell Grant that goes to students, and that's very helpful. 
people don't want to talk about health care as much, but as a mom and a single mom, I have health insurance. I have great insurance. Mm -hmm. But my son is allowed to stay on my insurance until he's 26 years old. That's huge for struggling families, families who need to make sure that their kids get, you know, those first jobs that might not carry health insurance. We got to keep this whole election personal mm. and make sure that we know now everyone as of 2014 will be able to have health insurance. That alone should make some of the families who are struggling right, right now uh, get some relief. I know that um, as a county commissioner, there are a couple of things that I, I think that are very important. I think that we need to make sure we take care of our seniors. Mm -hmm. We need to protect them. We need to build the infrastructure for our youth. And if a different administration comes in right now, we currently have the ability to get programs that help with gang prevention, uh, lie heat for seniors to keep them safe. We need to make sure that we have seniors who can live independently. Those programs are done on a local level. And I think that um, if we have a change in administration right now, it's going to be really, really tough on a lot of families in Multnomah County. Are you saying then that uh, you're getting a lot of calls, if you will, from uh uh, from uh, from constituencies and yes. also just residents, if you will, about the services yes. that you're talking about. You're getting yes. those kinds of calls. And, I, and, and, I'll, and I'll tell you what. Them. We helped 14,000 more seniors when we got the ARA money, the stimulus money, when President Obama initially went into office. That ARA money has dried up. Uh, we still have more need than we have dollars for. And with the current administration, we know that they care about our seniors and our youth. It's been told that if Governor Romney gets in, that he's gonna um, he's gonna block grant everything. Mm -hmm. That's just not gonna be a good thing for Oregon. So the beneficiaries of that are money were yeah. seniors, seniors the, and young people. We had we had summer job programs. We put a mm -hmm. thousand summer jobs into work in progress right here in Portland mm -hmm. when we had that hour money. Now does that that our money does that account for other counties as well, not just Multnomah County? Not counties? just Multnomah County, it was nationwide. But nationwide. for us in mm -hmm. the Tri County area, we put a thousand kids to work in the summer. Right. After that money dried up, I came into office in twenty eleven. I started a program at Multnomah County because we didn't have any more of those our dollars and we couldn't get anything passed through the through the uh, Congress because there was this obstructionist attitude towards any program that the president wanted to put through. So I started a program I couldn't do a thousand but I started a program where I put 25 kids to work and this past year I doubled that to a hundred so to 50 so that we could make sure that kids in our community had jobs I feel like this I think that our at-risk youth and that our underrepresented um, youth in our community they have a tougher time of um, of getting employment their unemployment rates are up to 40 percent so I felt like, well, let's give those folks some opportunities and place them in Multnomah County agencies so that they can learn what we do. And this is purely selfish, Bruce. Okay, you, yeah. you have to know, and the reason why, within the next five years, at least 40% of our employees, of the 4,500 employees, are eligible for retirement. Really? I want these kids to come back after they go wow. to college and wow. come and work for us. Wow. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. Well, tell me this in regard. What, what about businesses? Are they out? Are you outreach to those folks? Are they coming to the table and I've, saying, "Okay, what can we do?" To we help? have a lot of business partners who've participated with us, along with Work Systems Inc. to do our summer jobs program. Uh, there are a couple of entrepreneurs who participate as well. I participated in the president's. Um, 100 roundtables for entrepreneurs to mm -hmm. let them know the programs that the SBA is and where producing. Was that? Where was that? That was here in uh, Portland, and we it was on I believe it was May 17th of mm -hmm. 2011, and we kicked it all off on the same day. Mm -hmm. And so while there were uh, summits going on in Oregon, there were summits going on in New York, California, all over the country. Mm -hmm. And what we wanted to do was match up entrepreneurs with federal programs that help them, instead of using their credit cards and going into debt. We matched them up with services. We identified what were the problems, you know, access to capital, access to education and training programs. That was key for many of these entrepreneurs. So we put that on and we matched them up with some of the folks in our county district as well to make sure that they had those dollars to be the entrepreneurs that they are today. And we had software association folks. We had folks who had um, restaurants, uh, all kinds of things in the community that you wouldn't think about. But 
many of those startups only needed maybe a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars. So I created a micro lending program, passed an amendment 5-0 vote that put an additional $150,000 back into the system to help some of these entrepreneurs. And that was great. Mm, that was good. You know, and, and sort of reminded, you know, just recently, I think they were going to put out the fact that Intel is going to double that population uh, as far as their workforce, you know, in the area. And a lot of times you hear that word about the fact that we have to go outside of the country to find employees, if you will. Now, here's an opportunity, if, if, if maybe some apprenticeship program or whatever. Right. There might be some focus into the schools. Right. I.E. some, you know, you know, get the kids interested, et cetera. Et cetera. So all of a sudden, we can pick up all those jobs. Maybe right, jobs for the future. We, we need to know what those jobs are for the future so we can start training our kids in our schools right. today. Right. Because I know both the county and the and the, and the city of Portland are really not in the education because you've got Portland Public Schools. You know, you got their own board, if you will. But yeah. the fact of it, it looked like people are pitching in, right? But and let me tell talking. you something about that. I partnered with Mayor Adams. He's the one who got me involved really? in Summer Youth Connect. There was Summer Youth Connect at the city. And I said, we need to have Summer Youth Connect here at the county. Right. We didn't have right. one. Right. I partnered with him. And so that was why I was able to do some of the things I was. And I really, you know, appreciate him bringing me along. And now I'm going to be the the uh, leader in Summer Youth Connect, uh, since the mayor's no longer going to be in office right, in the right, first right, of the year. Right, right. But he was a, a great partner, and uh, he's leaving all of his, uh, his sponsors and uh, partners in this, and we're going to make sure that we get kids working this summer and that they <coughs> maintain uh, good jobs okay, good. after they get out of college. Mm -hmm. Bob, yeah, yeah. No, I was just wondering how, you know, when we when we started talking about the kids, mm -hmm. uh, one of the, one of the things that are of a real concern to me is the fact of the dropout rate. What what do you see uh, that the county or the city or even the school board or principals or teachers, whomever, can do to keep these kids interested in going to school because it's reminding me of the old days when parents uh when kids didn't go to school because the parents needed them at home right right now times are so hard until some parents really need those kids that are in uh, seniors and juniors in high school to go to work to help support the household well look at this you know five percent of multnomah county is made up of african americans and one of the things that i looked at when i came into office was you know where are we spending our dollars uh, Multnomah County, we spend a bulk of our dollars in public safety. And um, I wanted to figure out where, where was that money going. So as I, as I dug further, I found that 66% 60, of those dollars were going towards um, detention for African American males. So 66% and 5% of the population. And I thought, okay, what can I do to make sure that we either reduce those costs how can I have that help that population? So I decided to have a uh, town hall meeting, a forum for African American males, and I thought that I would get maybe about 50 <laughs> folks from, you know, from the community to come out and tell me what could I do as a county commissioner in, in the policies that I was developing in the budgets that we were creating. How could I be most helpful to them? And on that night, we we received upwards toward. 300 right. uh, men in the in the boardroom and I got a lot of flack from a lot of community people and they said well why are you having that meeting in the in the boardroom I said because that is the epicenter of power I want everyone to know that mm. they can come into the boardroom because it's their boardroom right. they have the right to come in to tell us what it is that they want I mean we have education programs we have mental health services we have health services and many of our youth to be quite honest with you they do need some of those mental health services and that's what we provide as a safety net and so what they told me because I, I gave them a survey I said what is it that you want and what careers would you like to go into now the careers that I thought that they would want to go into because we know this because we, mm -hmm. we deal with this is health care and mm -hmm. IT with technical stuff with with Intel and those kinds of things but they were from 12 to 71, and the bulk of the 20-somethings the hmm. and the teens, they wanted to be a professional athlete. I hmm. thought that was just... Hmm. Outrageous. Yes, wow. because they can't see it. They need, to, they need to see it before they can be it. And so for me, I wanted to figure out how I could get some dollars in those hands, and that also played into me doing that, um, that amendment to, to, to put money into um, 
micro lending. There's a, there's a young African American kid. He's, he's over on William Street. And he has a T-shirt shop, shop. He said prior to getting into that uh, micro lending program, he was selling T-shirts out the back of his car. Mm -hmm. He said now with this micro lending program, because not only did we give money, we gave training on how to file taxes and how to file for business licensing and those kinds of things. And he said, now I'm legit. And so that was, those were good words for me to hear, that the micro lending program helped him to get his books in order. And now he can hire, he has two people that he's hired. And okay. so he can even take, um, he, can, he can do jobs for us at Multnomah yeah, County because yeah. he's registered. You know, it was... It was one, one other. One get, yeah. get it was here. one other thing that I I, I attended that uh, yes, that meeting, and uh, everyone, some of my friends were going. You don't live in Multnomah County. Why are you here? I said because I want to see something new. That's something that someone is doing that's new, that's different, that's include that's inclusive, mm -hmm. rather than uh, separating uh, the masses from yeah. each other. I said, but the other part of this was. Uh, what I really enjoyed about the survey was you didn't ask for a name. Didn't ask for a name. You asked age. for age. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and that was something I hadn't seen before. So Just the age, right? So, so the age was to see who was in the room. Right, exactly. And, and, how, and, what, and what, what age group. And that's how, was, you know, she can say, uh, you know, it was 12 to, 12 to 71. That's I was right. sitting next to a guy that was 84. Oh, he didn't put it down. You know, and he, he didn't get the survey evidently. But, you know. The thing was, people came in with so many ideas and so many, it wasn't new, it was, it was new to them. I mean, it's the things that we've been fighting for all this time, but they thought it was something new to them, and you got a chance well, to it was it was new to them because I totally directed my um, outreach towards them. Mm -hmm. I think in the past, no one has really asked them specifically to talk with them to find out what, some, what are some of the barriers to... Um, you know, getting employment, what are some of the barriers into getting education and to, to accessing some of the um, health services. Did you see the young kid from Grant High School who said that he was receiving mental health services right. at um, Grant uh, Health Center and there was a possibility of that particular school-based health center being knocked off of our, our, our roles and mm -hmm. he said please do not close it because it has helped me. He said I'm an immigrant from Jamaica and I live with my grandparents right. and I need those services. They can't afford to give me health care. You all are offering health care. Please do not cut the dollars for this health center. And it was very moving to me and we ended up giving him a job in um, and uh, Chair Kogan's office. He was an intern that summer. Uh, he was he was very very eloquent, and he was also the reason why I did the um, the bullying summit at Grant, because there were there was a lot of things going on about bullying, and he actually helped me to put that together. Great, great, great. Well, hey, that was great. Now yeah. uh, we get to Frank. Now, where'd you send that data? Did you send it to Frank? <laughs> send some of that data to Frank. I mean, did you, I mean, get it to the governor or somebody? Right. Where, we you do we, that sent, data we sent the information off, and we actually. Sent sent the, the information to our department heads okay. so that they can figure out how to be inclusive, how can we do outreach to okay. to this population so that they feel like they're a part of it and that they can, you know, I oftentimes I see many of the kids going up to the second floor. Second floor is parole and probation. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wanted them down on the first floor so that they know that they're a part of this community and they okay. can contribute. Okay. So cool. good. Okay, Frank, well you've heard about the entitlement being used and <laughs> and some of the issues that are relevant mm -hmm. here within the largest county in the state of Oregon. And mm -hmm. so what are the Democrats doing around the state and well where we, do you stand on this campaign? Uh, mm hmm Well we are here primarily to elect Democrats to office. And we're so proud of Commissioner Smith. Um, she is an excellent example of why we work so hard mm -hmm. to get Democrats elected. And um, we've got a job right now to get the president elected and several statewide office holders re-elected and um, to um, turn the uh, state house Democratic and keep the Senate of Oregon Democratic, so we've got our we've got our job out there, and then there are Democrats up and down the ticket that um, need our help. So what we do is we work on making sure that people know where they can go to participate in the election process and help Democrats get elected to okay. office. Bobby, well, I you know for me, uh, one of the things uh, over the years I've been to three or four. Uh, uh, Democratic uh, conventions, conventions, mm -hmm. and 
a number of democratic functions. And when I'm in the room, I don't see people like me in the room. Mm. And what are the Democrats doing for mm. outreach in the black community mm -hmm. and in the communities of color and other and other minority communities? Mm -hmm. It, mm -hmm. it yeah. seems like we're yeah. we're we're behind the eight ball here. Yeah. And why? Yeah, it. I I agree. It it's um, a work in progress in terms of bringing uh, more people of color into active participation in the Democratic Party of Oregon, certainly um, across the nation and with the presidential campaign. Um, I think we um, see a certain level of success. Um, right now, um, we are um, in the process of reorganizing the Democratic Black Caucus. The org party of the Democrats here in Oregon have uh, caucuses for um, different communities, and one of them that's been somewhat dormant in the past has been the the Black Caucus. But uh, we're lucky that um, some of the convention delegates have stepped forward to um, re-energize that. Now, mm -hmm. I you know it's while it's while we have work to do. One of the things we were proudest of this year yes. is that we had a very strong representation of the African-American community in Charlotte at the Democratic National Convention. Hmm. The, most of those positions that, that are elected from the party, grassroots level, at district and um, statewide conventions held in the spring. Yeah. And this year we had 17, ultimately 17 African-American delegates, mm -hmm. um, most of them elected one way or another, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. represent Oregon. And that's out of a, a 89 uh, positions. So if you do the math there, we're well above what would be the percentage mm -hmm. of uh, Democratic constituency in Oregon in terms of participation at that level. And, and the aspirational goals, you know, Frank has been very modest, but I think we had 21 after it was all said and done. It was 21 African Americans that, that went to the convention and uh, Frank and others like Meredith, uh, they, they put a lot of energy into doing outreach into, into the communities to let people know that this is how this works, this is what you're going to need to do to be elected, and this is how the process is. And so he's being very modest. There was a lot of energy put in this time to make sure that every community from the LGBTQ, the Latino community, and the African American community, that they got people who represented Oregon and Oregon's values. That. Democrats uh, work so hard to, to keep forward in in the news. So I, I think that um, we we had a great turnout in in Charlotte. I happen to be one of those yeah, so one of those two, delegates. Yes, it, was, <laughs> it was it was great. It was great to be there. We had all of our federal folks there, and uh, Senator Merkley, Senator Wyden, um, Congresswoman Susan Bonamici, and all of our delegates. It was just a wonderful time to get energized and excited to go back out and knock on doors to make sure that this president is reelected again. Well, you know, I that that makes me feel good because I've gone, like I said, to quite a few. Um, uh, I can remember the time where we had chairs of the Democratic Party stand up and say, "We've met our quota." Mm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, when one or two of us, well, Which two of two. us, when, the, when two of us were elected, <laughs> you know, and uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. and and yeah. I'm glad to see that we've yeah. gr we've graduated, yes. uh, moved forward yeah. from that point. Yeah. Uh, but now the question becomes, how do of those that went to the convention, mm -hmm. of those that are that are out there, mm -hmm. there's a number of African Americans that want to be involved mm -hmm. that don't know how, and they when they walk into a building uh, and they look around and they don't see any of them working there, mm -hmm. they don't see any of them behind the desk there mm -hmm. or saying hi, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they begin to want, I don't want to be the only one again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they, uh, yeah. how do we get past that stage now? Well, we, we continue to work at it. I'd, I'd say, you know, there are many opportunities right now if we're talking about before voting day, mm -hmm. and I would encourage everyone to vote now rather than hold their ballot back. Well, let, let, let the Republicans <laughs> but, hold theirs. And, and, and I'm we waiting. Just, I'm and, waiting for because we now, Democrats have mailed ours out. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so there, you know, you can walk into a number of offices across the state, mm -hmm. and okay. and for Democrats, the easiest way to find out is to go to DPO, which is Democratic Party of Oregon, DPO.org, and you can find the information there, or call 503-224-8200. And there's a recording that will tell you where to go and how to get there. Um, there's, um, there's opportunities with the Obama for America also. And that number is 503-869-9777. And call that number and they'll be glad to help you assist the president in getting reelected. Now, um, there's another office, which is actually um, quite near here. Um, uh, Representative Lou Frederick um, has worked on opening up a, an office right here in this part of Portland. And it is an office that I'm told now is open from 9 in the morning to 9 in the evening, mm -hmm. seven days a week before the election to allow people to come in and work. And I'll give you that address. It's 1615 Northeast Killingsworth Street. And the phone number there is 503-933-7601. 933-7601, 16th and Northeast Killingsworth. Those are... You're right. There, it, was, it was open. I went mm -hmm. there this morning, and, mm -hmm. and, and Representative Frederick was there, and Casey was there this morning. We uh -huh. had volunteers over there. Uh -huh. It's right next to Partners, so if people want to come in um, and volunteer, they can get something to eat and get their packets and go knock on doors and leave their slate cards. Yeah. 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 You know, all that, uh, that's good for Multnomah County. Right. Mm -hmm. I live in Clackamas mm -hmm. County, and I have friends that live in Washington County mm -hmm. that goes, yeah. we feel left out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Democratic Party of Oregon is not the Democratic Party of Multnomah County. So we want them to expand this and no, get that message out we to, have new, new leadership to us in, everywhere. in Washington County. We got uh, Karen Packer, she's been doing a great job of trying to be inclusive over there. Uh, Luis Nava is over there and he's been trying to make sure that uh, he opens some doors for people of color. And we do have those opportunities and we do have those connections now. Um, so if, if they call us and they can call either one of us, <laughs> And get some information, and we can get them plugged in to, to people. It's 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 a new day in the Democratic Party. Of well, I tell you what, since you all, I, I'm, I've been listening. I've been, yeah. just, I've been wanting to get my little piece in, but I can remember when um, then uh, uh, Senator Senator uh, Obama uh, came to Oregon, came mm -hmm. to Portland. I noticed that there was no quote opportunity to have him come over in the Northeast Portland corridor, whether it be by car or whatever, you know, waving a hand mm -hmm. or something like that. I, I just didn't notice any uh, outreaching to the African American community. What happened well, he, during that he, particular he time? He outreached to the African American community, and, the, and there were meetings that were had with different constituency groups mm -hmm. prior to his. But not in the community. You know. Well, we, we, we brought the community to him because you have to remember those meetings are controlled by Chicago, not Bright Oregon. They tell us what they're going to do when they come in, and they, they have like a small window that they have to, to give it to give with the community and they have to block off streets. There's a huge, yeah. there's a, it's security. a huge production, yeah. security oh. production yeah. to get mm -hmm. him into the community. Mm -hmm. And even when the president was here this last time for his, um, for his um, fundraiser, he was uh, scheduled to speak with some of the faith leaders in the community, but because of the, 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 the incident in Denver, mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of security issues and we were just not able to do it. We brought folks in so that they could listen to him and they could have a couple words with him, but it's not because he didn't care about him or that he didn't want to. Security in Chicago dictated what happens. We don't, they tell us at the Democratic Party of Oregon what they're going to do. We don't right. have any. Mm -hmm. We give them advice and it's up to them. They understand that they're key constituents groups here locally and they try to reach out to them and that's why they have people here locally to reach out to those organizations it is a, it is a new day Bruce trust well, me well you know the only reason why I brought the issue up is that this is the first time we've ever had an African-American president yeah. in the mm -hmm. United States mm -hmm. and we're having a lot of problems with our youth 
and yes. whatever their mm -hmm. needing something, if you will, to mm -hmm. get them motivated, if you will, to do better and do well. Mm -hmm. And I think it really would, as an asset, him being an African American. But the idea of him coming in the community, meeting with a bunch of kids uh, uh, along that particular mm -hmm. line, I mean, and, and that was well respected, if you will, by the majority of the community. Because yeah. in all due respect, he got almost 99.9% mm -hmm. of the vote when he ran for president. And I was just thinking, I didn't see that outreaching you know, uh, from the standpoint of the, the party, getting them in those communities, because we got a high crime rate situation, we got the gang situation, whatever. It just made, to me, it just made good sense. Well, and I think America across the board yes. would like to have seen it, not just Republicans or mm -hmm. Democrats. You can't go everywhere, but one of the things you have to know is that this administration is, is very clear on what they want to do. They have programs like Race to the Top for Education. Roosevelt High School got one of the... Um, a handful of federal grants from the administration to, to reshape a school and reshape an area where they had low attendance and uh, low academic standards. They're changing some things around. Principal Charlene is doing a great job out there and she's using those dollars. The president saw it loud and clear. He knew exactly what was going on in Oregon and what the demographic was and that's why Roosevelt High School received one of those, uh, one of those grants. Yeah. Yeah. I saw, I saw those yeah. grants. And I guess the other little point I would uh, I mean, these are just little, the small pieces that I, I'm looking at. I, and I guess at the convention, I, I, I saw you at the convention. I thought it was great. I saw Ron White, and then I saw Earl and all those folks and whatever. But the thing that I thought was interesting is that I, and I'm, I'm pretty avid in regards to politics and knowing what's going on. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Al Sharpton speaks on an ongoing basis. He supports this president, I mean, 101 yes. percent across the board. And he's constantly doing that. But then at the convention, I did not see him on the diocese. And I didn't see, I didn't, I didn't see, and I didn't see uh, Reverend Jackson on the diocese. What happened with well, that Well, let situation? me, can I, can I tell can, you can about you this? I was yeah. a member of the Black Caucus. A lot of folks want to know. So that people know. Um, the, the way it was set up, uh, Al Sharpton is, is also a member of MSNBC where he has a show, and so he had a particular do job to do. But I can tell you about Reverend Jackson and Al Sharpton and First Lady Michelle Obama. They came to our individual caucus meetings. You all didn't get a chance to see that. So during the daytime, uh, the Latino caucus, the African American Caucus, the LGBTQ, and the Women's Caucus, we all have meetings and we have guest speakers. Those folks came and talked to us in our meetings in a smaller setting. Um, actually, uh, Reverend Sharpton was, was basically reporting the news. He wasn't making the news by actually giving a speech. In 2004, me and Bob were in Boston, and he was one of the, the key speakers in Boston, and I mean, he hit a home run. That was our first time that we became acquainted with uh, Senator Obama. So they were, they were down on the ground. They were talking to the people. There was, no, um, there was no question that people at the convention knew that they were in the House because they were. They were were everywhere. Everybody knew that they were there. They had a, a, a setup for the for the press at the um, the CNBC Center, and and they were interviewing constantly, you know, around the clock. I just so asked. they I, were I, there. They were I, there, I, there I on the asked. ground, I, and, and I, people I just, knew that they were there. I just asked. They were there. I'm just asked because there were, and there there was uh, mm -hmm. there was a period of time there where the 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 networks were not covering the convention. The convention started at five every yeah. day. Mm -hmm. And went to about eleven, yeah. mm -hmm. so there were, um, there were there was plenty of time there on the podium for a lot of different folks that you didn't you didn't get a chance to okay. see. Okay, yeah. Frank, uh, let's talk about the rest of the state. What are some of the issues, the other concerns that you won't have around the state? Well, bef if you pardon me, yeah, I we're, just we're, wanted to yeah, insert Reddy, one more piece <laughs> in terms of the Democratic Party's participation with the African American community, and this, uh, this you're not going to see this happen for this particular election, but we've set in motion this reorganization of the Black Caucus, and I wanted to give folks uh, some information on that. They will be having a reorganization meeting on November 11th. That's uh, a couple weeks from week Sunday. After. Yeah. And that'll be at 2 p.m. at uh, 3131 North Vancouver Avenue in Portland um, in the Arch Conference Room A. And the interim chair right now of the, of the Black Caucus is Aaron Woods. And he actually lives out in Clackamas County, I right. believe. Yeah. Right. You know him, Bob? 
I don't know him, but I've heard of him. You know him already? Oh, yeah. Bob knows him, too. He, I, I probably know him. I don't know him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's a good guy. He works he's with Xerox out there. Okay. He's there a couple. Right. You, you know Aaron oh, Woods. Uh, Shirley Woods' husband. Shirley Woods' husband. Uh, yes. I know, really? I know, I know he knew him. He just is having a Frank, senior Frank, moment. Frank, put the name. I, I keep Frank, having the name out there, right, Frank? Right, right, right. <laughs> okay. So, if there... And then uh, Kelly Johnson is the correspondent secretary. These are all interim positions. Um... um Lakitha Elliott is the uh, other secretary and mm -hmm. the treasurer right now. This is interim position again is Shirley Minor. Mm -hmm. So all these folks are working hard to get the, the Black Caucus uh, going again. And okay. everybody is, is uh, invited to participate and elect the permanent officers of the Oregon Democratic Party Black Caucus. And what is caucus. the role of the Black Caucus? The Black Caucus, just like any other caucus within the Democratic Party of Oregon, is there to essentially um, um, be the conscious. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> be the conscious, but educate the, the, the state central committee, the, the governing body of the Democratic Party of Oregon, on issues important to that particular caucus. Mm -hmm. And some of the things you're mentioning here today have not been really communicated and, and folks throughout the state haven't been educated on the importance of having uh, folks behind the desks that they recognize, that they're familiar with, that they're comfortable with, and, and others in the party that they can see that are, are, part, of the, are, are part of the process. So that, that's, that's, that's a key piece. That's kind of well, I used to chair the Black Caucus. Uh, Loretta and I and Shirley Minor uh, were linchpins in starting the Black Caucus. Mm -hmm. uh, I wrote the bylaws for the Black Caucus uh, back in those days and uh, we, we wanted to make sure that the Democratic Party understood that it was important not just to look, to, look towards us for our vote but also to be inclusive and to understand what the problems are that involves the African American community and we're not just in one basic community we're all over the state and we are in in all over the state african-americans as well as other minorities have uh, problems i was also a member of the senior caucus mm -hmm. uh, a member of uh, i set in on the uh, latina caucus because we all had when we began to talk with the one thing that we found out is that the problems that we have are not just our problems right. they're everyone's problems and if we can all come together, so you got again, Asian caucus. I think you have Asian caucus. Bikers caucus. Bikers. There, uh, there's no bikers, but no bikers caucus anymore. No, no, no. Uh, the bikers they, are gone. They, it was there at one point also. They were there. LGBTQ caucus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, so it was about. And so it wasn't so that we could sit separately over here in this corner and talk about our issues and try to force somebody mm -hmm. to do something about it. It was to bring everyone to, uh, together in a smaller group other than the whole main group, talk about the issues and take them to the main group so that they can, we can all begin to work on those. Yeah. Yeah. Am I yeah. correct? Yeah. You know, yeah. one, of yeah. the, one of the concerns you have, and I would say this to the, even the Republican Party and any other entity for that matter, mm -hmm. is that one of the biggest problems is trying to find candidates. People that are, you know, mm -hmm. to help them be qualified, that can relate to et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, uh, one thing we've, we've not had in the, in the quote, community for a number of years, blacks, if you will, black community, is that the candidates fair. You know, it's been kind of shaky. You know, sometimes we can, you we have can, one, we can find sometimes candidates. you don't have. But if you, can you know what it is? You know the issue is? Mm -hmm. the, the problem is, it's the money that has to go along with that candidate. Now, I can recruit a bunch of folks and I say, I, you, I think you would be good for this position, this position, this position. Unless I have some money to give to those candidates because they're not in the queue. Uh, one of the things that I did Friday night that was probably unheard of, and mm -hmm. Margaret Carter said that this was a bold move for me to do, I had a fundraiser on Friday night. And all of these folks right here, Kelly Johnson, Lakeitha Elliott, Shirley Minor, and many of the people who are in the uh, Oregon Black Caucus, mm -hmm. they were there because I'm giving them a blueprint to show them how you do this if you want to be right. a candidate. And did I did it early. Did you raise the money? Yes, sir. We, we raised money. 200000 I'm waiting for your check and I'll get it over. Get us yeah. over. <laughs> We're getting closer to the two hundred thousand. Get us over. But, but, you, you well, but we it did. Was good. I it, that. that was good. It was good. great. So, was good. Um, was but good. it's not the issue. It's not lack of talent. It's the good. issue is how do we get folks into the queue so that they can raise enough money so that they can get their message out? Because right now, for a local level, pretty much your message is going out by mail, mm -hmm. and you have to raise enough money to to get those mail pieces out. Mm -hmm. You got to have five, mm -hmm. six mm -hmm. mail pieces, mm -hmm. and so for a new candidate, they have 
have to be out there knocking on doors, it's hard. They don't know the people to be able to call them and say, I need $1,000. Mm -hmm. I need $500. I need 10 more thousand dollars to get my last two mail pieces out and then I can get my message out. Okay. They don't have that. I was just lucky that I've been around for a long time and I knew who some of the players were mm -hmm. that I was able to get in. But I'm trying to bring folks along as I go along. Well, that's a good note. That You look like you got an action plan, the Black Caucus is being organized at the yeah. state level aspect of it. So you guys got a plan. So I'm going to have to go back to, to my caucus and see whether or not I can get the, <laughs> Which one would that be? The just, Republican Party. Just tell them to change their party. And come on, they don't I'm have to reinvent the I'm a Republican, Republican. My whole thing has been trying to educate the Republican Party about their history as it relates to African Americans. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that's, that's a valid point. Yeah. But at the same time, I think this is a this is a worthwhile need. And I and I really appreciate, Frank, that you're here, Bob, I.E., and, yes. and always keep doing that job, that good job, thank and you. sharing thank it you. with the city and the rest of the folks. Yes, thank that you. Fair? Thank you. And it's thanks very for being fair. with us. Appreciate that very much. And who are you going to be voting for uh, for president? <laughs> There's no question. I'm a Democrat. I'm voting and for this president, President Barack Obama. Frank? Yes. Um, I've met him a couple of times, looked him in the eye. He's a great man. Okay. And we and really Bob, when is he going to be coming over to the, north, uh, to the Northeast Portland community? We'll be working on that. Okay. We'll be yeah, working on that. We'll work on that and, uh, just, just to please you. And, you know, we'll try and make sure that he's here. Who are you that. voting for? I'm, I'm holding in that for him. Who are you voting for? Well, in all due respect, you know, Colin Powell, you know, who's, who's the commander in chief, who's, you know, i.e. secretary of state, the mm -hmm. whole nine yard. He just recently came out for, for President Obama and made that point. And, and some of, some of my, um, my cohorts in the Republican mm -hmm. Party sort of denounced him. Uh, my, my, my dear friend, uh, Senator McCain, who I met, and uh, mm -hmm. I, was a little, I was a little surprised that he he made the statement that he made from the standpoint that he should become a uh, that he should become a Democrat. Well, I had a prominent Republican here in the state of Oregon that suggested the same thing for me. But I'm a Lincoln Republican. I want my point is that I want to make sure they they are educated about their history, which a lot of times they don't want. To, they just need it. So does that mean you're going to support the president? I said that I will be voting uh, next week. So <laughs> so uh, you're undecided. Was it? Are you undecided? No, I'm not, I'm you're not, not undecided. You just don't want I, to tell. I've got my ideas. I just okay. think there's going to be a lot of things happening next week. Yeah. I really do, and I want to see what's going on. Well, you know, we can't tell people who to vote for, but we can definitely tell people to vote their values and their yes, conscience. Right, and I exactly. think if you do the right thing, that you'll be voting for right, President Obama. You, you know, that's not, that was going right. <laughs> Back well, Dave been wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Look, folks, it's been great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you it. for having me. All right, Frank, it's always a pleasure. Yes, sir. Okay, buddy. Bye bye. Yeah. Yeah. We'll All right, right then. Hey, look, we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Okay, welcome back, folks. Again, uh, again, as, as I indicated before, we're right in the election times right now, and these are some very critical times. Uh, there are a number of undecided voters. I mean, I happen to be one, and, and, and folks all the way around, but we're still talking about the campaign. You're still getting bombarded with a lot of material at home. Uh, you got a lot of talk shows, and people come up with their varying variations about their backgrounds and this, that, and the other. But, you know, hey, that's what it's all about, but I would suggest very strongly, you know, you know one, one thing in this particular state, you will vote by mail. You got a voter's pamphlet, and you can just easily take that voter's pamphlet out. Probably the closest thing that comes to a balanced kind of an election, if you will, 
because um, uh, you got the pros and cons on both sides. You have the opportunity to see the candidates. If they're not listed, you can always call up, if you will, uh, the Secretary of State's office and get the background check on on whomever's running, because in your ballot itself, it basically lists the names of folks and whatever. So what we want to do this particular point in time is that uh, we want to just go on, maybe spend a little time talking about uh, the elections and, and et cetera, and maybe uh, talk to, and so I thought what we do this time around, Bob's here as usual, uh, is that we, we, we'd invite someone who's running for office, very hard to find a per people of color to run for office, someone who's running for Congress, uh, in fact, he's running on the ticket. What's, what ticket was he? Uh, I've been endorsed by the Progressive and the, the Green. Progressive and the Green Party. He's listed in the uh, in the ballot. I, I, I know that he's on the ballot, uh, and I'm talking about um, uh, Mr. Mr. Woodrow. Uh, and so he's been around for quite some time. Woody, Woody has been around for quite some time. Been been very active in the community. Been a small business person. Been very active with youth. He's He's been, been called at times and spent a lot of time with the Juneteenth situation, uh, pros or cons or whatever, but he was always there. He's traveled nationally to promoting the Juneteenth effort aspect of it. Uh, he's, uh, and, and Mr. Booth is one of his uh, supporters big time and one of his mentors, for That's that matter. And, and, and everyone knows uh, Dr. Booth. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I want to say hi, Tom. How you doing? Hopefully you're watching the show aspect of it. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the opportunity to give uh, uh, Woodrow an opportunity to share his, his platform a bit and at the same time talk a little bit about little politics. Let's talk about uh, the elections that's on board and, and some of the concerns from a national perspective. But again, at the same time, we want to start off first off to give uh, uh, Woodrow, Mr. Brodnick, uh, the opportunity to maybe talk about uh, himself and uh, why he's running for office. Let me start off there. Give, give me a little background, basically, about yourself, Woody. And I've, say, I've said as much as I possibly could, but <laughs> just, just dot a few more of the I's and get right into your platform. Well, uh, since I've been involved in the African-American community here in Northeast Portland, a lot of issues have come out in terms of recidivism, uh, the uh, revolving door for people that are coming out because uh, basically there was no support. So along with my brother, Don McMillan, we established Inside Outside People which would receive these individuals and help them to take a step forward. Uh, after Don's death, that particular program morphed into Stay Clean, uh, which has a success rate for people who are trying to recover from addiction. The revolving door uh, process was one which we had to really take a strong look at because every inference of having paper on a person allows them to be snatched off the street at any given time. Uh, based on information, whether false or true, that was submitted uh, to the local authorities and to the parole and probation people. And that led to, outside of me, the establishment of the uh, uh, supportive program from the probation department for African-American prisoners to get them re organized and reinitiated back into the community. Mm -hmm. As we went through that particular process, I became involved with the Juneteenth celebration, which gave me a lot of the energy and the moral courage to be able to be here today. Because without the knowledge of my history, I was, just as everyone else, in a revolving door scenario. Once I established that, I went uh, to the Democratic Convention in 2004, not as a Republican, not as a Democrat, but as a representative of the Juneteenth. Watch the sensitive of the mic. I'm sorry. Just, just don't pound the table. No, 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 of the no Juneteenth. And mm -hmm. amazingly enough, the line went around three or four blocks. But the power of our history allowed me to walk to the front of the line, to walk through without any kind of obstacle, to walk all the way down to where the Oregon delegates were. This is a Democratic and, convention we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. I saw him on the floor. And Bob was there, and uh, <laughs> it was shocking to the rest of the Democrats. Mm -hmm. how, how did he do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. You, know, okay. you get in before us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so well, he's running for Congress. Yeah. And so this led me to uh, that evening at the Democratic convention that was at the Hyatt. Uh, I was greeting uh, Rango, uh, held, hugged uh, Nancy Pelosi. Yeah, called from Rango. Hugged Nancy Pelosi, shook hands with Willie Brown, and as I looked to my left, I saw Earl coming up, and I was very delighted. I said, Earl Blumenauer, Congressman Blumenauer, Congressman Blumenauer. Okay. and he ignored me, and so I had to rough up my voice a little bit, and I said, 
Congressman Blumenauer. <laughs> and he stopped. And I walked up to him and I told him, I'm a constituent of yours from the state of Oregon. My name is Woodrow Broadnax. You don't recall me? And he stood there for about five minutes as if he was going through the whole list of the world. <laughs> and in five minutes, he came back with, yeah, I remember you. And then he took off. And I don't think that that's the way that a constituent from the state of Oregon that goes to Washington, D.C. should be received. It showed an arrogance which set within me a mission to be able to take that position and be able to treat all Oregonians when they come to Washington, D.C., not in an arrogant fashion, but kick your feet up on the table, have a cup of coffee, and let's talk about the issues. And this is what primarily promoted me to get into this race. Did you uh, have the opportunity to meet the, uh, the other delegations at all? I met, oh yeah, I, I, they had many parties that night. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about the senatorial uh, representative. Yeah, we, we met country. with the Black Caucus, and uh, they came in and... Uh, but Senator White, no, Senator... Uh, no, 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 this was the Black Caucus. We didn't oh, actually meet you. with Senator Wyden or anyone else at that particular piece. There were different types of uh, convention caucuses that were going oh, I see. on. This was, a, this was that a we could go piece. to. Okay. And so as I, I sat there and I listened to what was going on, I didn't feel the representation, even from the Black Caucus, was, was being stymied. And I couldn't put it together why they were being stymied, but then Loretta said it just as easily as, as pie. Money. Mm. Money allows you to be heard. Money allows you to be able to be out in the public podium where people can see you and be able to assess you. I have called for many debates to the Sierra Club, to the City Club, and various other clubs and organizations. Let us have a debate. Were and you able to do this with the, yeah. My incumbent friend, Earl Blumenauer, has not debated anyone in 10 years. Hmm. And I could not understand why, because we need to be able to look at both individuals and make a true assessment of their body language and how they are responding to certain questions. But you did approach questions. the city club. I know knowing I, you, I yeah, know I you did. approached these in the individuals. And what did they say to you? They said that, uh, well, er, 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 we, we don't have a, uh, no one scheduled anything for Earl. And this was resounded from the Willamette Weekly all the way to the Sierra Club and the city club. So it made me believe that they are, protecting this gentleman from being able to have a true debate where people can make the right decision about their interests and that he has a safe place in Washington, D.C. He's been there for 15 years and is speaking about retiring. Well, I want to retire him earlier. Mm -hmm. I want him to go so, ahead and so take a tell trip. Me, tell me this, Woody. Um, yeah. What issues do you feel that Earl is not responding to within this particular, well, that's congressional district, what, that, is that five, right? Three. The three. That's three. Okay. So what is he not responding to within, as far as his constituents within District 3? There are two areas in which I feel that he is not responding. One is in regards to uh, having a relationship with this community. He has never came down here and knocked on doors and spoke to the people and got a feeling for the people in order to represent them. But he has gone to the farms to talk about farm dust. He is the transportation person. He has helped to do that. But when it comes down to the livability of human beings in this community, Earl Blumenauer does not have the connection with the community to be able to prosper and the community prosper along with him. And he is rich. That's the bottom line. He's a very rich man. How is it that you propose that a rich person is going to represent a poor person when he's building relationships with rich, richer people? Mm -hmm. It's just not going to happen. And so I like the idea of the Black Caucus here at Oregon, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's a great thing if it can happen. But from what I've seen so far, it has become uh, lip talk mm -hmm. because actions speak louder than words. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take anything for Bob or anyone to call out for the African community. Come on board. Let's sit down. Let's discuss this. Let's put it together. Mm -hmm. But that has not occurred and has not occurred because, again, we get down to the final, the, the, the seed of it all, money, mm -hmm. you know. Well, and, tell, me this, tell me this, another piece I was going to ask you about. What other issues within District 3 do you think he's not representing himself well? Outsourcing jobs. 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 The economics. When we talk about the economy, Blumenauer has a record of being a part of FISA, being a part of the uh, new uh, outsourcing dynamic that's occurring between South America and the United States you of mean America. Outsourcing meaning? Uh, meaning like sending out jobs. Promoting jobs outside. Of and third world countries, hmm. okay, because it's cheaper and it means more money. Any specific uh, employer you think you might 
be able to know of uh, that we one might be able to share that, uh, that you might have come across in your research? Mm, Not necessarily. No, because about again, that person would have to be a dollar bill, mm. <laughs> and he's he's gone. Washington, he's gone. And so when we talk about having someone to represent, why do we look outside ourselves? Why do we look outside our community? Why do we send for people all the way across the United States to come in to run the Urban League? Why do, that's just a, a, a symbolic mm -hmm. symbolism of what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. The energy and the people are here and they would stand up, but because of the lock hold that the Democratic Party has, except for the Democratic when I was born, from my parents' parents and their parents' parents. And I didn't recognize until recently that you got blue dog Democrats, you got red dog Republicans, okay? And it became apparent that at the time of all of this obstruction. We got about two more minutes here. Bob, I want to get one more question. Go ahead, Bob. And then to you, and then, you, want, you want to ask some question now? Bob, well, I, I can understand your, 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 I don't want to call it anger, but your concern for the community which I know, I've known you for a long time, and I know where that, you know, that that's true. But how, how are you, well, how are you getting your message out uh, to the masses? And what would you recommend that other African Americans that want to do what you are doing proceed? One of the Voters Digest, let me say that right off the bat, because he did contact Digest. me, mm -hmm. he contacted us. As, as well as Dr. Don and various other uh, events, actual events of action in the community, whether they are progressive actions, whether they're Green Party actions, whether they're Democratic actions. It is my responsibility to be there and my responsibility to bring those people to a, 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 a concept that if we're going to be truly inclusive, you've got to understand that within the Democratic Party, there are disenchanted African Americans and there is racism there as well. We don't even have to talk about the Republican Party. So my suggestion is, when I became a Green was to establish the 19th of June Green, which is an African-American political party partisan, where we can deal with our issues. And this is where we have been lacking. The Democratic Party is so large, it's like President Obama. He can't respond to us as African-Americans or black people because he's the president of the United States. Right. The Democratic Party is the same way. It can't deal with the emphasis of the black. This is why we're talking about a black caucus. Okay, we got about 30 seconds left. Why don't you let them know how they can they participate in your campaign? How do, what do they call? What do we, how do they get in touch with you? Okay, you can uh, participate in my campaign by going to Broadnax for Congress. Spell uh, that out B-R-O-A-D-N-A-X, the number four, Congress. Dot com. You can, we have a website that's set up where you can see and hear what my positions are on a lot of the things that is are there going phone on. Number there? Is there phone the number is 971-998-5034. Okay. And it's time, I mean, it's, it's time for a revolution. There you go. A revolution that includes blacks actually standing up and being counted and not the Democratic Party being counted because, as I said before, the Real issues quick. are too broad. Okay. On that note, thank you very much. Thanks for being here. Okay. Wish you luck. Good job. Okay. All right. Okay, folks, thanks again. And uh, we'll be looking for you next week. We'll definitely be going into the whole issue of uh, the results in the next week. See you next week. So George Page always said, back to what you believe in. Right. And do get out and vote. Otherwise, you don't have anything to say. Take care. Bye.